Yeah. Can you start, ma'am? Yeah. Uh, good evening, everyone, and uh, good evening, delegates. Uh, first of all, we thank you, uh, Dr. Shweta Kumari, ma'am, for accepting our uh, uh, medical webinar. So, on topic of microbiome and EIT. And uh, we welcome Dr. Shweta Kumari. And Madam has done her MBBS at RIMS, Ranchi, and uh, also done DNB and Obstetric and Gynecology, and also certification course in gestational diabetes and benetes. And Madam is a current, she is a consultant uh, obstetrician and uh, gynecologist and a private practitioner and uh, ex senior consultant at Medica Super Specialty Hospital at Jamshadpur and ex resident at RIMS. And presently, she is a secretary at Jamshadpur Obstetric and Gynecological Society and uh, ex treasurer of uh, Jamshadpur Obstetric and Gynecological Society from 2019 to 2021 and practice as an expert chase person. Or sorry, participated as an expert chess person and a speaker and a panelist in various national and international conferences and life member at IMA and FOXY and ISO, PARB. And also, Madam has uh, given various publications in PubMed Index Journal. And her area of interest is especially high risk pregnancy and medical disorders in pregnancy. So, with this short introduction, I will welcome Dr. Shweta Kumari, ma'am, once again. Uh, to take up the session further, ma'am. Please, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you for the nice introduction. Today, I will speak on the topic of vaginal microbiome and ART. Now, the vaginal microbiome plays an important role in maintaining women's overall health. The vaginal Microbial community plays an important role in vaginal innate immunity and inhibition of bacterial, viral, and yeast infections. The urogenital site contributes 9% of the entire human microbiome as compared with the gastrointestinal tract, which comprises up to 29% of the total. The vaginal microbiome is dynamic and it changes throughout a woman's lifetime and is commonly dominated by lactobacillus species. Vaginal health, influentially significant to human reproduction and public health, but it has attracted less attention. Vaginal microbiome is an intricate and dynamic microecosystem that constantly undergoes fluctuations during the female menstrual cycle and the woman's entire life. The vagina harbors huge micro ecosystem containing billions of microbes. The indigenous environment, microorganisms and their genomes jointly compose the entire habitat, also known as the vaginal microbiome. Now there is homeostasis of the vaginal microbiome. In the ecosystem, a homeostatic and mutualistic relationship exists between the microbiota and its human host. The host provides a humid, nutritious, and warm habitat for the microbes, whereas the resident microbiota produces antimicrobial and anti-inflammatory factors. The first line of defense against non-indigenous microorganisms is established through this. There is balance of harmful bacteria and the good bacteria. Now, the vaginal microbiota divided into five groups. Four of these groups were classed as lactobacilli dominated. Group 1, 26.2% of population sample is lactobacillus crispatus dominated. Group 2, 6.3% is lactobacillus gasseri dominated. Group 3, 34.1% is lactobacillus inners dominated. Group 5, 5.3% is lactobacillus gensi dominated. Group 4 is classified as non-lactobacillus dominated 
and included Gardnerella, Brittovilla, Corine bacterium, and Atopobium. Now, during reproductive years, there is high circulating levels of estrogen and progesterone and lactobacilli dominance in the vagina. Estrogen causes deposition of glycogen in the vaginal epithelium and the progesterone supports the lysis of the epithelial cells. The glycogen release and lactobacilli metabolize the glycogen into the lactic acid and thus the normal vaginal pH of four is maintained. Now, the microorganisms are present not only in the vagina, but also in the upper female reproductive system, including ovaries, fallopian tube, and the uterus. With, now, the relation between vaginal microbiome and the ART. The female reproductive tract has an active microbiome, and it is suggested that these microbes could influence the outcome of assisted reproductive technology. Many studies found an abnormal vaginal microbiome had a negative effect on the ERT. Abnormal vaginal microbiota has been associated with poor reproductive outcome in patients undergoing in vitro fertilization as well as with early spontaneous abortion in patients undergoing in vitro fertilization treatment. Thus, it uh, causes um, adverse effect on the IVF treatment. Studies confirm that vaginal microbiota rich in lactobacillus species without bacterial vaginosis, either clinical or subclinical, leads to more positive outcome with artificial assisted reproductive technology. Now, vaginal microbiota and in pregnancy. The microbiota in pregnant vagina is less rich, less diverse as compared to non-pregnant vagina with predominance of lactobacillus species. A significant higher stability of vaginal microbiota in early stages of pregnancy and the same increased with gen gestational age. The etiology including estrogen increases the thickness of the vaginal mucosa, increasing the glycogen deposition. This glycogen deposition acts as chemotactic agent for microbiomes as this is major substrate caused by these microbiomes, which is broken to glucose and then fermented to lactic acid, playing a significant role in lowering the vaginal pH. Yes, now the main factors that modify vaginal microbiota. First is age. In childhood, there is low estrogen level and glycogen level, thin vaginal epithelium, low lactobacilli species is there, and the vaginal pH is high. In adult women, the estrogen is high, glycogen level is also high, the uh, vaginal epithelium is thick, and there is high lactobacillus species, and uh, all these causes lower pH of the vagina. And in postmenopause, again, the estrogen level decreases, glycogen level decreases, there is thin disrupted vaginal epithelium, low lactobacilli species, and high pH. And uh, infections, aerobic vaginitis, lactobacillary microflora is disturbed, pH is raised up to 6 to 8, and yellowish discharge is there. Staphylococcus aureus and E. coli are the prevalent organism. In bacterial vaginosis, lactobacillary microflora is disturbed, pH is above 4.5, there is white gray discharge, inflammatory changes, Gardnerella vaginalis and mobilancus species are the prevalent organisms. In pregnancy, also the lower concentration of mycoplasma and ureoplasma, there is decrease in pH and increase in the vaginal secretions. Other factors that modify vaginal microbiota are ethnic group, smoking, and cancer. The altered vaginal microbiota leads to urogenital problems like vulvovaginal candidiasis, bacterial vaginosis, urinary tract infection, and pelvic inflammatory disease. The role of lactobacilli. Lactobacilli provides a defense against pathogen colonization such as Trichomonas vaginalis, Candida species, and Gardnerella vaginalis by producing lactic acids 
and H2O2 and bacteriosains, and it also modulates the non specific host immune response. They survive under low gastric pH, bile salt, and passage through the intestine and then ascend without functional intervention into the vagina. Now, the female reproductive system microbiome alterations have been associated with different IVF outcomes, while lactobacillus species have been reported to exert beneficial effect, which is shown here in this picture with green arrow, and the specific endometrial or vaginal dysbiosis has been related to worse success rate, and which is shown here with the pink arrow. Mechanism of urogenital colonization. There can be different mode of spread uh, for the colonization. First is hematogenous spread of the bacteria. Then there is ascent from the vagina and others like uh, retrograde spread through the fallopian tube and ART related gynecologic procedure also uh, helps in ascent of the infection. Now this picture is showing the um, Nugent score. This is used to uh, quantify the uh, infection in the uh, vagina. The bacterial, the first is uh, Nugent score zero. It is healthy vagina, uh, gram positive rod shaped bacteria can be seen, pH is less than four, and high lactate concentration is there. In the second, uh, bacterial vaginosis can be symptomatic, but often, more often, it is asymptomatic. There is overgrowth of gram negative or variable and aerobic bacteria, Gardnerella, Atopobium, Prevotilla, Sneagia, and the Megasphera. The symptoms can be odor, foul smell, and uh, thin vaginal secretions. In this, pH is more than 4.5, and uh, exfoliated epithelial cells, which is few cells, can be seen. The first picture has Nugent score 0, the second picture has Nugent score of 10. The lactobacillus dominance and low vaginal pH is unique to humans so far. Others, apes, monkeys have less diverse microbiota with lower percentage of lactobacillus. Human vaginal pH varies between 3 to 4 and the vaginal pH of baboon is between 6 to 8. Lactic acid and low pH creates strong antimicrobial environment permissive of lactobacillus colonization. The glycogen level in the vaginal human are variable. In the postmenopausal woman, pre-pubertal girl, and the woman with bacterial vaginosis, the lactobacillus levels are low. Vaginal lactobacilli use glycogen to produce lactic acid and to acidify the vagina. But it is uh, not that lactobacilli directly utilize the glycogen. Lactobacilli cannot directly metabolize the uh, glycogen. Human alpha amylase present in the lower genital tract mucosal fluid processes glycogen to support the vaginal colonization by the lactobacillus. A meta-analysis of bacterial vaginosis and the infertile population shows that uh, there is prevalence of bacterial vaginosis up to 19% and uh, of these 50% of the cases are asymptomatic and it often leads to preterm birth, post-surgical infections, negative impact on the female infertility. The effects of uh, assisted reproductive technology on vaginal microbiota. The circulating hormones impact greatly upon the vaginal microbiota and susceptibility of women to infection. Exogenous hormones impact upon vaginal environment and composition of the vaginal microbiota. The circulating hormone impacts uh, the vaginal microbiota and susceptibility of women to infection. This uh, was study was done in 2012. Uh, by Hyman and Etchell and vaginal microbiota on the day of embryo transfer. It affects the pregnancy outcome. Women with ongoing pregnancy was characterized by top gender by some fraction. Lactobacillus species were the top species. When the lactobacillus is dominant, there is no bacterial vaginosis. The outcome is favorable. Great care should be taken to reduce the risk of microbial transfer 
into the cervix during embryo transfer by cleaning the external os of the cervix with culture medium and avoiding touching the vaginal wall and the external cervix with the catheter tip. In tubal infertility, abnormal uh, vaginal microbiota significantly associated with tubal factor infertility. Chlamydia trichomatis are the most prevalent in bacterial vaginosis positive women. Components of an abnormal vaginal microbiota <coughs> are sent through the cervix into the upper genital tract and pelvic inflammation and thus reducing the fertility. <coughs> In patient undergoing fertility treatment, <coughs> the clean vaginosis and abnormal lower genital tract microbiota was significantly more common compared to the general population. One in five infertility patients have bacterial vaginosis, one in three having disturbed vaginal microbiota. Bacterial vaginosis does not impact on conception rate. <laughs> Infertile patient undergoing IVF. Implantation rate was reduced in those women who were bacterial vaginosis positive compared to bacterial vaginosis negative patient. And the difference was not st uh, statistically significant. The effect of ART on vaginal microbiota. Contamination is possible from the <coughs> vaginal cervical and microorganism by needle puncture of the vagina. Microorganism that enter the endometrium from the cervix during embryo transfer could damage the developing embryo and prevent the pregnancy. <coughs> it um, pathophysiology of vaginal imbalance in female infertility. It increases concentration of interleukin 1B in the vaginal environment, triggers the generation of reactive oxygen species. It affects the membrane integrity and flexibility and impairs both tail motion and sperm oocyte fusion. Thus, it disrupts the fertilization and implantation. Now the role of probiotic, the hallmark of a healthy vaginal microbiota in most women, a relative abundance of lactobacillus species. Looking to the future, a healthy vaginal microbiota can help to prevent urogenital conditions such as urinary tract infection, bacterial vaginosis. Therefore, studies leading to a better understanding of the vaginal microbiota will facilitate the discovery of improved treatment and diagnosis for such condition. Probiotic containing lactobacillus. Uh, it is used over a long period as an alternative to antibiotic and particularly within the context of high infection recurrence rate. The probiotics, the characteristic of potential probiotics should be acid and bile stable and human origin, production of antimicrobial substances and the adherence to, to the human intestinal cells and it should be persistence in the human intestinal tract clinically validated and documented uh, health effects, uh, antagonism against enteric pathogen, and it should be susceptible to antibiotic and safety in uh, food and clinical use. According to World Health Organization, the probiotics are defined as live microorganism, which when administered in adequate amount confers a benefit on the host. Prebiotic. Prebiotics are compounds in the food that induce growth or activity of beneficial microorganisms. Together, prebiotic and probiotic forms the symbiotic. Now, the prebiotic characteristics are it improves the work of digestive system, it stimulates the growth and reproduction of only useful microflora, it maintains an optimal pH in the intestine, stimulates local immunity, removes excess mucus from the wall of the small intestine, it reduces the formation of gases, suppresses the reproduction in intestine of pathogenic bacteria, and also it stimulates the 
this. Now, this uh, slide is showing one study done by Infectious Disease Society of America concluded that uh, it, uh, st our results strengthen the potential role of lactobacillus in promoting the favorable environment for pregnancy and suggests that microbiome characterization would be useful together with standard clinical and laboratory assessment in the pre-IUI evaluation of infertile couple. Uh, this slide is also showing one study. Um, abnormal vaginal microbiota may negatively affect the clinical pregnancy rate in IVF patient if a negative correlation between abnormal vaginal microbiota and clinical pregnancy rate is corroborated. The patient could be screened and subsequently treated for abnormal vaginal microbiota prior to the fertility treatment. Uh, this is also showing the uh, study result uh, of bacterial vaginosis compared with women with other causes of infertility and 40% of the patients undergoing ART have bacterial vaginosis. <laughs> Lactobacillus and implantation. The normal flora of the reproductive tract include a variety of lactobacillus species which promote healthy supportive environment for the embryo in the pre- and periconceptual period. Lactobacilli provide a safe environment for implantation and uh, lactobacillus comprises 90 to 95% of total bacterial count in the reproductive tract with four species showing numerical dominance, Lactobacillus crispatus, Lactobacillus inert, Lactobacillus genseni, and Lactobacillus gasseni. Two main attributes of Lactobacilli have been shown to play pivotal role in shifting the balance of the reproductive tract environment in favor of successful implantation and the pregnancy. The Lactobacilli produce lactic acid, which lowers the vaginal pH and makes it unfavorable habitat for many pathogens and live birth rate has been directly correlated with recovery of the H2O2 producing lactobacilli from the embryo transfer catheter tip and inversely related with bacterial vaginosis. The quantitative assessment and identification of specific microorganism of the cervical vaginal microflora could increase the accuracy of available tool for the diagnosis of infertility and improve the adoption of therapeutic protocol. The, this is also one more study showing uh, the vaginal composition prior to the start of hormonal treatment of ART seems to be predictive of in vitro fertilization uh, in intracytoplasmic sperm injection outcome with mainly a highly negative predictive value. The local microbiota, especially the absence or presence of specific microbes within the part of the female reproductive tract, seem to be associated with the outcome of ART. <clears throat> the vaginal microbiome can influence the result of ART. The profiles dominated by lactobacillus were associated with achievement of pregnancy, there was relationship between stability of the vaginal microbiome and the achievement of the pregnancy. All these are showing different studies which concluded the same thing. Again, in this, our result demonstrate the existence of an endometrial microbiota that is highly stable during the acquisition of endometrial receptivity. However, pathological modification of its profile is associated with poor reproductive outcome for in vitro fertilization patient. This finding adds a novel microbiological dimension to the reproductive process. Thus, uh, there is one more study, European Journal of Obstetrics and Gynecology and Reproductive Biology, which shows that uh, treatment of bacterial vaginosis improved with, improves the ART success rate. In bacterial vaginosis treated patient, the pregnancy success rate is 49 percent and if the bacterial vaginosis is percent thank you this um, in conclusion it is that uh, before doing any art procedure treat the bacterial vaginosis it is very very important
thank you so much ma'am thank you for the wonderful Hello. presentation yes thank yeah, you thank I, you. I, yeah yeah thank you ma'am uh, madam on the dashboard i can see a few questions ma'am can i take up ma'am questions one by one yes yes okay uh, first question is uh, for how long probiotics can be used for uh, getting a good microbiome environment during art treatment ma'am for how long yes how long uh, it depends upon the um, uh, infection is acute or chronic but minimum for 2 weeks it should be given minimum for 2 weeks hmm okay ma'am uh, ma'am another question is that is it beneficial to pre treat patients with probiotics before going for ivf treatment actually if there is um, as i said that in 50% of the cases it is asymptomatic but uh, if uh, even if uh, asymptomatic and we are finding that there is no harm in giving the prebiotic and that can be given to improve the outcome and uh, many studies have shown that it has positive pregnancy outcome it improves the pregnancy rate so we can uh, easily treat before doing any rt procedure okay it is for probiotic do you recommend probiotics for every patient ma'am yes it can be given to every patient even if asymptomatic there is no harm in giving if you are giving it has beneficial effect on not only on the vaginal microbiome also on the gastrointestinal tract very so, very good and madam yes. uh, probiotic this is question is from our side company perspective because probiotics uh, you know usage the, now the market is approximately 1000 crores market ma'am so nothing but i mean to say that uh, single specific strains are evolving in the market so when it comes to lactobacillus as you mentioned in the presentation lactobacillus species are very much required for the maintenance of vaginal health and all so do you believe in a specific strains role especially when maintaining uh, vaginal health specific strain actually uh, any pro probiotic um, i i should not mention any specific name and uh, any probiotic can be given and um, that has beneficial effect okay okay fine ma so ma'am can uh, one more question is there uh, hmm. can probiotics help pregnancy pardon can probiotics help in pregnancy probiotic actually it doesn't have uh, any uh, as um, in my slide it was shown that uh, if you treat the um, bacterial vaginosis before then it will be beneficial and uh, suppose if, uh, this is almost the same question if you give the probiotic uh, it is not going to do any harm if there is no uh, a significant uh, improvement in the pregnancy rate outcome it is not going to do any harm so if the patient is suffering from long so at least if you are not giving anything then patient won't be satisfied that you, no no you are having uh, everything perfect you don't need any medicine just for the some placebo effect also you can give and uh, there is no harm in giving so i i think it should be given to every patient okay fine ma'am ma'am one more question is there oh. is it necessary or uh, in bacterial vaginosis patients along with the antibiotic plus probiotic is it necessary if required how long antibiotic actually i give only in symptomatic patient and um, uh, not in all the patient if the patient has complaint of uh, vaginal discharge then in that case antibiotic is needed and in that case also probiotic first i give the antibiotic and then followed by the probiotic Uh, that i follow not simultaneously both okay fine ma'am so there are no more questions here so thank you ma'am thank you so much for the uh, wonderful your time your product totalis is um, yeah. very much beneficial and uh, i think it works also and it should be given and sometimes if you provide some medicine to the patient then the patient also get satisfied and that boosts her mood and all that and in that all case also it helps thank you ma'am thank you so much for the wonderful words about our product it is a first dcg approved brand ma'am and many doctors are complimenting about the product as well as the specific strains which i mentioned here because lot of studies also are there madam 
so thank you so much madam for supporting our product ma'am and i would like to uh, inform you that our products our pro- totalis is uh, uh, it is a process of lyophilization madam it is coated with the lyophilized technology because of that reason refrigeration is not required throughout the shelf life our product uh, maintains a viable count of the bacteria why because ma'am recent uh, uh, evidences and from nh also shows that cdc also tells that uh, probiotic supplement should contain um, uh, cfu colony forming units number of colony forming unit at the same time the supplement should maintain the viable count throughout the shelf life that is what we are meeting man unlike some other companies are uh, you know uh, required for them it is required refrigeration is required cold chain is required so the moment if not maintaining properly cold chain the bacteria get disturbed destroy so they cannot maintain throughout the life uh, shelf life man so here there is no problem with our totalis because of the lyophilization technology so every you can also see the inside the capsule that every specific stain that granules you can see it is coated with even if you keep it outside also temperature it will, it will absorb, does not absorb the moisture man that is the beauty of this product and just uh, thank you for giving the opportunity to share about my product man thank you so much thank you madam thank you My, nice presentation thank you ma'am thank you bharat sir thank you thank you people thank, thank you ma'am have a nice evening thank you thank you thank you thank you, thank you.